Uh, so today we've got Ben on Testimony Tuesdays and he's going to be sharing his testimony. Um, so Ben, why don't you just go ahead and just introduce yourself, just like, you, you know, where you come from, how old you are, just a little bit about you so people know who you are. Sure. So my name is Ben, obviously, um, and I am in Colorado, United States. I'm 24 years old. I've been a Christian for about a year and a half now, um, and I am a veterinary student. Um, cool. So that's cool. basically the rundown on me. Great. And you are a follower of Jesus. Um, that's why you're here. Uh, so if you can take us back to right, you know, right the way before you know, everything happened, just back to the beginning, um, and just run us through your life, like how did you grow up, and when did you meet God, and how did that happen? Sure. So growing up, um, my family went to church, like occasionally, sometimes we'd go more than others, um, but it was never really like a committed thing, and um, the church that we went to, uh, it wasn't a spirit-filled church, uh, it was the kind of thing where you'd show up, people would go once a week, you know, we'd sing some songs out of a hymn book. Uh, there'd be like a nice message, but there was no conviction of sin um, or any of that sort of thing. And um, I guess, you know, I never got a whole lot out of it at that point. And I just looked around and I just saw a lot of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people would go to church once a week, but then live however they want the rest of the week. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just, oh, I can't, sorry. <laughs> um, so I just saw that and, you know, as far as like the truth goes, I'm just like, surely this isn't it, you know, this yeah. is, yeah. So, um, yeah. So then I graduated from high school and went off to college and, um, in preparation for, for veterinary school, I started studying, uh, you know, natural sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, genetics, uh, all that sort of stuff. And, um, so, you know, I learned about the theory of evolution, um, and, uh, you know, just started thinking more about the world around me, you know, mm. never really thought that much about it in high school. I feel like I was more just focused on hanging out with my friends and just having a good time. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, just started thinking more about those things and just started thinking about evolution. And, you know, once you adopt that worldview, it just leads you down a path that uh, it just hits a dead end. Uh, for me, it just it just created this like nihilistic worldview, you know, like mm -hmm. nothing really matters. Um, all that is here is the material world um, and so forth. And so, yeah, um, I was also going through a period of time at that point too, where I feel like a lot of friendships had kind of dissolved and I was just really kind of isolated. I was focused on my studies. You know, I just decided that like, you know, I'm just going to put my whole self into school and just get through this kind of thing. Um, but uh, I guess it was around that time too, I started uh, smoking more pot. Um, and it was kind of with that too, it started opening up my eyes to a reality that was beyond the material world. Um, I started getting really into reading about people's experience with psychedelic drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just opened the door for like me exploring a lot of like Eastern philosophies, like new age stuff, yoga, meditation. Um, I started practicing uh, a lot of those things and just being more mindful and stuff. Um, and would you say those things opened you up to something spiritually? Did you have yeah. like real tangible experiences in those, with those things? Yeah, yeah. So, like, one of the big things I was into was, like, chakra meditation. Um, and for anybody who's not familiar with chakras, um, they're a Hindu uh, concept, Hindu-Buddhist concept, to where you, you know, there's supposedly these main energy centers down your spine. Mm. Um, the big ones that people, you'll hear people talk about are, like, your third eye chakra between, like, on your forehead, your crown mm. chakra. And there's seven main ones, depending on who you talk to. But um, I got really into meditating on those, um, you know, it just kind of went along with reading people's experiences and stuff. And uh, yeah, I can say that um, they're definitely real and you definitely can open them. Um, and you just start seeing the world differently, I guess. Uh, it opens you up to seeing like the spiritual dimensions. Mm. Um, 
And uh, yeah, one thing I was really into as well was just developing like psychic abilities like through um i know a lot of this stuff sounds pretty crazy but like through like opening the third eye chakra um you know you'll read about people having experiences about knowing their past lives and stuff and, yeah yeah uh, sure i mean i've heard some of this before definitely yeah yeah, yeah it's uh there's a big world you can go into and the thing with the new age movement is there's there's all these different facets of it there's mm -hmm. not like one unified belief uh, sure, so it's really sure. just kind of a, it's a grab bag of like whatever ideas suit you or whatever ideas sound best to you or, or speak the most truth to you personally. Um, sure. so yeah, that's the, that's the route that I went down and, um, you know, just kept going more and more down that route. And I feel like the more I did, the more I like tuned into this, uh, you know, this, this other reality, I guess. Um, the more I kind of disconnected or got more disinterested in the world around me, um, you know, I just spent a lot more time alone, uh, spent a lot more time like in nature, just wanted to be like, you know, in peaceful environments. Uh, um, yeah, so it, it just really kind of like led me into this, this whole different little world. And, um, yeah, another, another thing that went along with that, as far as like, uh, your worldview is concerned, a lot of people in, uh, the new age movement, uh, you know, they'll acknowledge a God, but God in new age terms is more like a force, you know, it's something that's like inherent in all of humanity. So it's very much like the original sin from mm. the garden of Eden. It's like that you are God, that you can achieve enlightenment through knowledge and like esoteric teachings. Uh, and all this stuff. And uh, that was one of the things when I when I met God, when I came to Christ, that was just so profound was like, I went way down this door. But it was like, if I had just picked up a Bible and read that, it's like, there it is, like, you know, first book of the Bible exposed kind of thing. So um, another thing that kind of goes along with uh, this school of thought, and one thing that I was really big into is like extraterrestrials and uh, UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, I was a believer of the ancient astronaut theory. And uh, for okay. those who don't know, yeah, for those who don't know what that is, it's essentially just the belief that life on Earth was seeded by extraterrestrial beings from other planets. Um, and it, it ties in with like the, like the theory of evolution too, you know, it's mm -hmm. like if life evolved independently on this earth, then who's to say it didn't do so on other planets and there aren't more evolved beings. Um, and it's just, it's just a rabbit hole that like, if, if the devil can get you to believe one thing, it just opens the door to like all this other deception yeah. essentially. And, um, yeah, I, I bit the, I bit the hook for sure and went, uh, went way down Wow. that rabbit hole. Um, so basically though, I, um, coming to the end of all of that, I, um, I had finished, uh, my time at university for undergrad and, um, I had moved to Colorado to start veterinary school. And, um, it was around that time I was just feeling a whole lot of anxiety. That was the other thing too, about, about doing all this and opening myself up to, uh, you know, the spiritual realm was I just, I got this really, uh, all this anxiety, I had sleeping problems and uh, I was just very much not at peace. And it, the only time I was at peace was when I was like doing meditation or doing yoga. And I feel like it just, it draws you in mm -hmm. and it just makes you, it's like a drug, you know, it's like you need more and more and more of it just to feel calm or at peace or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting to the end of that road, I had moved, I had moved up here and um, there was a there was a new age blogger um, who I followed, and I, I respected uh, her opinions quite a bit. And um, one day she just uh, she just renounced like all of um, all of her yoga, new age practices, occult practices, and all that, and uh, just turned to Jesus. Just did like a complete one eighty. Wow. And, um, do you remember who that was? Do you remember her name? Uh, I do not actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, it was a while back. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, though, she, um, a lot of her followers just, you know, got up and left and she just started going a new way. And, um, you know, it just made me question a lot of what I believed. And, um, um, and so, yeah, I, I just started researching like the history behind this and some of the people involved 
and just realized that it was, uh, you know, essentially satanic at its core. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a, there was a satanic website that I, I remember I was reading uh, just in the process of like, you know, researching all this. And I was so, it was just so eerie how similar all my beliefs were to like Satanist beliefs. And so that was just a major wake up call for me. Um, and, um, yeah, I basically just, I broke down and, um, I just prayed that, um, if God was real, that he would reveal himself to me. Um, and so a few days later I was on campus and, um, one of my good friends, he's an evangelist with the church I go to. Uh, I met him and he just, he came up to me. I was sitting outside my building and, um, you know, he just asked me like, you know, do you believe in God? Like, can I, can I talk to you? And, uh, it was just, I took that as a sign from God and, uh, basically just kind of submitted myself to, to his teaching and learning about the Bible. And, um, that's kind of where, uh, it, where it's gone since then, you know, just going to this, I, I went to his church and it was like nothing I'd ever seen or experienced before. Um, you know, just the Holy spirit was moving, just people were completely different, you know, everybody living their lives for Christ. And, nice. um, and that's where I've been going ever since. Brilliant. So tell us about some of the changes that have happened in your life. So since you came out of the new age movement and met Jesus, so what happened? Like, how did you change and what did God do in, in your life? Yeah. So, um, one thing that was big was, uh, my relationship with my parents. Um, it just, it got way better. I was mm. just able to humble myself a lot more. Um, yeah, just, uh, just crucified a lot of pride that I had. Um, and just, uh, just was a lot more patient with people. Um, so that was a a really big outward thing was just, uh, reconciliation with my family, I think. Mm. Um, what else? Um, that's a common one. That's the same with me as well. You know, like definitely my relationship with my family has improved a lot. I think that happens to a lot of people, you know, because I think family can sometimes be the hardest people to actually love and care for, you know, because of all the stuff you've been through and then you have to forgive all these things. So yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, they know they know everything about you. You yeah. know, you can't hide anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I think yeah, just just being able to love though, just just being able to humble myself. I think mm. just knowing that I had been deceived so much, and that I know nothing, and that God knows everything, and. Um, and just, just explain the word, you know, just living out the word and just realizing on deeper and deeper levels that how true it is. Mm. Um, and, uh, coming out of the new age movement, one of the, one of the biggest verses that struck home with me was, uh, second Corinthians eleven fourteen that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Mm. Uh, it just, it just couldn't ring any more true with mm. me, you know, being through all of that. Mm. And did you have any problems uh, sort of co- coming to Christ from the New Age movement? Because a lot of people, when they come to Christ from the New Age movement, there can be a lot of spiritual doors that have been opened. So there can be quite a bit of backlash. So did you experience any sort of negative things in the spiritual realm as, as you met with God? Mm. Not nothing overt like some of the testimonies I've heard because yeah you're right I, I've read about people or heard about people just just going through this incredible spiritual warfare mm-hmm. um, but I think it was just overcoming like anxiety I had had and uh, you know just praying for those doorways to be closed um, it was really one of the things that really drove the nail in for me was um, the church I go to um, we have these things called prophetic words where people who have the gift of prophecy uh, you know they'll pray over you and they'll give you kind of like an individual word like about mm-hmm. your life and this is like when I just first started coming so like you know I didn't know anybody there they didn't know anything about me and um, one of the first prophetic words I had just talked about how I had opened myself up to like influences yeah. and uh, it was just incredible you know like it, it just it was just like there's no way that wasn't from God so <laughs> yeah I know what you mean yeah those times where you're like oh yeah I know what you're referring to I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> awesome 
awesome. So, so now going ahead, um, you know, in your walk with God, like, sort of, where where do you where do you want to go, like, in the future? Like, so you're hope, hoping to finish veterinary school, and sort of practice in that field. Yeah, that's my yeah, that's the plan. Um, honestly, it's it's just submitted to to God. Yeah, um, just following whatever He sort of wants for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I think there are a lot of days where I feel like I, I could be making a difference in ministry uh, to some degree, too. But, um, you know, my studies just take up a whole lot of time at the moment. So, you know, wherever um, wherever he leads after that is certainly where I'll go. You know, I, I know he'll provide and make a way for it. Of course. Um, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. So in the interim, though, I mean, I'm just trying to... Um, be faithful with that. And also just, you know, just seeing how it's like refining my character just with the trials uh, and, you know, just some of the challenges that come with that too. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause <laughs> every day is sort of like a refining process, isn't it? Every day. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And it's often, um, it's often the little things as well that make such a big difference in the, in our character and stuff that God changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just being, um, I think one thing that veterinary school has taught me is just being, um, just being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that's a good principle to learn for the Christian walk with, um, you know, persecution and, um, just struggles against the flesh and all that stuff, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And God, God will be with you and God will help you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we all just, like, want to have, like, a comfortable, easy life and, you know, have to, like, that not always being the case, so. Definitely. Is there anything, um, is there anything else that you'd like to share in, in your walk? Yeah, yeah, so I guess picking up from that point, too, um, as far as spiritual warfare goes, um, I think, um, you know, after being, after getting saved, you know, just walking with Christ for a few months, I, um, I had met a girl and, um, she had a background, uh, similar to mine. And so I could really relate to her and, um, you know, just, just having some of the shared experiences and, uh, backgrounds and stuff. And so, you know, started, started seeing her, started talking to her more and, um, it was just brought to my attention, um, you know, it's uh, it's Second Corinthians uh, six fourteen about not being unequally yoked with unbelievers, and um, and so I mean I, yeah I she started coming to church. You know I was I shared my testimony with her and all that stuff, and um, she started coming to church, and uh, for a while like it looked like um, you know there there could be a future there, and mm-hmm. I just got way more attached than I should have at that point. But, um, you know, there, there were just things in the word that she wouldn't accept, you know, just, uh, just didn't want to lay down her life, I guess. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Holy spirit led me to break things off with her, which was just incredibly tough. Um, and after that, I don't know, we still stayed close. We still acted like we were, you know, together more or less. And it was just kind of this constant thing about like, me knowing it was wrong, me knowing that like it just it had to end, but not wanting to, you know, just being insecure about it, or um, yeah, just just being afraid of what would happen, you know. Um, so that went on for a long time, like probably six months or so, mm-hmm. and um, the final straw, um, you know, the Holy Spirit just she was like coming back um, to town after being gone for the summer. And there was probably like a period of three or four days where I just like hardly slept, just felt so much conviction and just like couldn't get away from it. Like the Mm. Holy Spirit was saying like, you need to deal with this now. Mm. Like this is the end of this. And um, it was actually your, uh, your unequally yoked video that, uh, that gave me a lot of courage to really go through with, uh, with that obedience. Bless you. (laughs) <laughs> and yeah, I probably watched it. I, I don't know how many times in a row I watched it to get courage for it, but uh, in a row. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was just like crazy how similar your experience was to mine. It was like you were speaking directly about my situation, just like the um, the emptiness about being with someone like who you couldn't share uh, your innermost self with, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. 
it was just horrible. It was like being stuck between, you know, it was just like stuck being on the fence, I guess. And, um, so I don't know. I finally, you know, finally broke it off and it was, it was a disaster. Um, I really had to find deep repentance for it. And, um, yeah, so it's just been a struggle, um, since I guess just, just moving on from that, um, and, uh, just making the Lord like first in my life again. Uh, and there's a whole lot of other stuff that went on to like, um, my parents going through some issues, like family issues, uh, just the struggles with school. Um, I feel like there was just a lot of spiritual warfare going on. There were just like a lot of emotional things like weighing me down yeah. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, just had to learn to really trust, um, the Holy spirit and, uh, move on beyond that. So, well, let me encourage you because obviously I was in your situation, right? And honestly, like when you listen to God, you know, he does, he does know what is best for us. Like he really does because we can be like, no, 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 but I like this person and you know, I want to be with this person or whatever. And God's like, yeah, but I know way more than you do. Like, I know everything about that person. I know everything, I, everything about you. And this is, this is going to be a total disaster. So how about I save you a lot of heartbreak right now? <laughs> you know, yeah. he's our heavenly father. And like, for example, now when I'm married to my husband, it's like, I don't have any of that emptiness. Like me and my husband the way that we think is on just the same level. Like the conversations are at the same depth. You know, it is an equally yoked relationship. And I tell you what, it's, I don't know how many thousand times, you know, I can't a thousand times better just to have a conversation with somebody like that, you know, and the majority of the time in your marriage, you're going to be speaking, you know, <laughs> it's like, it doesn't really matter what else, what else you're doing, you, you, you know, if you can't have a conversation, you know, it's, it's not very good, um, yeah, it's, I know what you mean. You know, you can you can like someone, but that it's total it's total lust. It's it's nothing. It's just flesh. And you know, at the end of the day, all that stuff um, only lasts for a time. And then you have to look at the foundation in your relationship. And if one day you know you realize that, you, or, or you in our situation, we already did realize that we had nothing in common really it was kind of like we saw the world totally differently oh that's a horrible foundation to bring up children and all the rest of it like now that we have a child like with my husband it's like we're totally on the same level you know we speak and he understands what I'm talking about I understand what he's talking about <laughs> and it's brilliant you know I can't imagine that with another person and and you know God really um brought me and my husband together so I believe that he will do the same with you you know give you that kind of wife that you really relate to each other on that level because th there is not a single man even Christian man I, I'm, I'm, I met lots of Christian guys you know um not like that I went on dates with them but just in passing and every time I'm, I met any kind of Christian guy there was always something about their character that I didn't really like like there was always something that I didn't really agree with um, or a point of view like that didn't really ring true to me but with my husband we're totally on the same level you know so I feel like this is just a totally like blessed by God you know relationship that you know we really are one so you know I pray that that would be your portion as well you know that you'd get that as well because it's so important you know it's so nice to be able to relate and to understand one another. Yeah. Yeah. That is encouraging. Yeah. I, it was just, you know, just wanting to see her come, uh, to get saved, like in the worst way, you know, and I just poured so much of my soul into that, you know, and <laughs> I wish I would have been obedient, like from the get go and just not continue to go down that road, you yeah. know, cause God does know best. You're right. And you know what? You save the other person a load of hassle as well, don't you? Like, through our disobedience, we actually hurt other people if we don't listen to God in terms of our relationships, you know? Like, if we only just listen to God, 
you know, we wouldn't bother other people, but whenever we're disobedient, you know, regardless as to whether our own feelings were hurt or whatever, you know, we at the end of the day, we've messed somebody else about. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. you know, it's we have to listen to God in this area. He knows best. And he will bless us. And at the end of the day, he's got a plan for them as well, you know. And it doesn't involve us. He's got a different plan for us, you know. Right. Yeah, that was that was a really hard thing about it too. You know, just it was just on my face about it for a while. Just because I just completely failed in so many respects, you know, disobedience, hurting the other person, idolatry whatever else you know just so many so many sins wrapped up in that situation so i know what you mean and i have been there and it is really difficult but trust me you will get through the other side and and god will you know it will be just a distant memory and you will you know continue to press in with god and as long as you know you don't make those kind of same mistakes you know just stick to god's ways you know you will be very blessed you know and god i believe god you know can and will in his time, you know. Well, I, I can't say will for sure, <laughs> but I pray that he will give you, you know, a loving wife who you can really connect with, you know, and who you will be like, this conversation is amazing. <laughs> like, I'm always so blessed by the conversation with my husband because it's very edifying and you can't get that with a relationship that is unequally yoked, you know. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Cool. Well, thank you very much for coming on to share your story. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Or you... Nothing in to mind right now. Uh, I think that's kind of the brunt of it. Um, yeah, okay. thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed Ben's testimony as well and our conversation. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you for watching.